Uh, I will start with uh, saying that this amendment is not about gay marriage. That's basically the really the first place to start from. It really is not about gay marriage. There is actually about three categories of amendments that have been passed um, across the country. And the first one, first type does simply uh, prohibit marriage between same-sex couples and says that marriage is only a, a union between a man and a woman. Um, this is not that type of amendment. The second type of amendment not only prohibits marriage between same-sex couples, it also prohibits any legal unions, you know, civil partnerships. They, they're not going to give any recognition status to those. Our amendment is not that type of amendment. We're in, t in the third category of amendments, which not only prohibit same-sex marriage, prohibit any form of recognition of a legal status, a partnership status between same-sex couples, but it also prohibits it for all unmarried couples. So who's really going to be affected by this amendment more than the gay community is the straight community, the, those um, unmarried couples in our state. And according to the last, um, last census, there was about 186,000 cohabiting unmarried couples in North Carolina. And of that, 90% are straight. So that there's 90% of that 186,000 are the ones who are going to be um, affected by this amendment, and it's only 10% who are same-sex. Well, what you're going to see on the ballot shall, will be a for or against constitutional amendment to provide that marriage between one man and one woman is the only domestic legal union that shall be valid or recognized in this state. Um, and that's, you know, the word only domestic legal union is what we don't know what all the implications of that. It's not simply marriage. Um, the, the bill that the legislature passed had the additional sentence that this section does not prohibit a private party from entering into contracts with another private party, nor does this section prohibit courts from adjudicating the rights of private parties pursuant to such contracts, which would mean, you know, you could enter into some private contracts and the court should uphold it. But that section's not on the ballot, so that's going to be one, you know, there's some confusion about, um, about that. And cause another one, none, one of the many challenges that will probably pop up um, whichever way this amendment goes. Um, so my sound bite for, you know, you know we're supposed to have that elevator conversation for when you get five, you know, two seconds to talk to someone about this amendment. My soundbite is that this amendment would prohibit all unmarried couples and their families from creating legal protections for themselves. So not only is it not giving any new protections, it is taking away protections that individuals um, have been able to have. Uh, in terms of estate planning, again, the only way unmarried couples can get protections is to do documents. I mean, obviously, if you're married, the law has many, many, we have many, many laws that if your spouse disinherits you, you're entitled to go to court and get what we call an elective share. You're entitled to serve as executor. If your spouse died without a will, you're, there's just a whole long list of um, things you get to, rights that you have as a spouse um, if your spouse dies. For unmarried couples, the only thing they can do is, is put it in the will. If they, in a will, if they don't have a will, their property is going to go to their next of kin. Um, and also, wills are important to name guardians of your children, um, to do powers of attorney, healthcare power of attorney, all of those things um, would be really called into question whether these documents. I mean, if the document is based in any way on the concept that they have a relationship, then this, this could be a, a real question. So even look, things are coming up now, I used to put, or I still do, but clients are starting to ask me more about it. I put, you know, I'm leaving my property to so-and-so who is my life partner. Um, and, um, and not only was that good language because that was what in fact it was, it was great to go and ed start educating the clerks of court and other court officials that yes, this isn't just a friend that I happen to want to leave everything I own to, you know, this is, um, so it was a good educational tool. And now we're, there's some thought we shouldn't put those in because then it was sort of red flag the wills and um, better not to say anything and go back to, you know, oh, just pick up this person that I want to leave everything to. So it's sort of, you know, in a sense, <coughs> going back in the legal closet at least. 
So, and then we also um, see experience in other states in terms of laws such as domestic violence that, um, that, that right now we do have protection in our domestic violence statutes for same-sex couples if they were living together. Um, they're treated a little bit differently than unmarried straight couples, but um, there is still some protection. So not only will they lose protections, also the, all the uh, other unmarried couples could. And again, you think this is maybe extreme, but after um, Iowa passed their amendment, uh, actually the, because the statute had included recognition of unmarried couples, um, many uh, men being charged with domestic violence, but many straight men started challenging the domestic violence statutes in Ohio and said, well, this recognizes our, our relationship and therefore you can't um, enforce this law against us. And it took years and years and um, several levels going up, the, um, the men would win and have their cases thrown out. Finally, the Ohio Supreme Court has finally said um, that, it, that it, the domestic violence statutes can um, still be applied, but uh, that it's caused a big mess in, in Iowa. Idaho passed a similar amendment in 2007, a similar one was passed in South Carolina in 2006, and they have yet to be a final word in their courts as to what their amendments mean. So it, it, it does take years. Um, and so in the meantime, we may say things like people literally leaving the state and moving out of the state, which is, um, we saw that when, uh, unfortunately, two years ago, the our Supreme Court said that we couldn't do second parent adoptions anymore, whereby a, a, a second parent could adopt his or her partner's child and invalidated all, the, all those adoptions we did. And literally, many of my clients um, moved out of state in order to go to a state where they could get their family um, protection that they needed.